Okay, so you have an instrument for us today. Um, uh, what what do you have for us? Well, uh, you know, in the early '80s, uh, and 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 it's remarkable that the musical instrument digital interface survives today in its original form mm -hmm. that it was originally de developed with in, in 19, about 81, 82, mm -hmm. when there were several musical instrument manufacturers to get together and agree on a standard mm -hmm. for digital control of synthesizers and musical instruments. Mm -hmm. So that was called the musical instrument digital interface. Right, okay. And as a result of MIDI, mm -hmm. you had the ability to, d to develop different ways of generating this MIDI information. Mm -hmm. The most common and most well-known instrument is a, a MIDI controller is a keyboard. Mm -hmm. But on the keyboard, you have the notes themselves, and then you have things like uh, pitch wheels, modulation wheels, ribbon controllers. Um, that generate MIDI information that is then sent to the tone generator to control how the sound is made mm -hmm. or produced mm -hmm. or played mm -hmm. or performed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, um, one of the uh, first alternate controllers that mm -hmm. was uh, successful for Yamaha was the wind MIDI controller. Mm -hmm. And the first generation is this instrument right here. It's the WX7, late 80s. And uh, it has a dedicated uh, connector, but it has a mouthpiece with a reed mm -hmm. and keys that resemble the same key, key layout as a saxophone. Mm -hmm. And so when you, you generate MIDI information by blowing into it. Mm -hmm. You generate MIDI information by putting your lip on the reed, mm -hmm. which controls pitch, and then you determine what note you're playing by the keys. Mm -hmm. I remember when I had um, a keyboard that had a breath controller. Was that some of the, the earlier technology before this came about? or? Well, that was a, an innovation Yamaha okay. came up with, um, actually in, in controlling analog synthesizers to begin with. Mm -hmm. The CS01 was the uh, first analog synthesizer with a breath controller input, mm -hmm. and that was just simply a mouthpiece with a cable that connected to mm -hmm. the to the instrument mm -hmm. and generated control voltage, mm -hmm. which was the early um, equivalent to now what is digital and known as MIDI. Okay. Control voltage could be routed to, a, to and assigned to things like pitch and right. volume and filters right. and things like that. Okay. So it was a, uh, the early analog method of controlling synthesizers was control voltage. Okay. You had mentioned that I believe in our, well before we got started that this received some awards or something. Uh, uh, the, the design, yeah. uh, you know, there was a, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, research and development into the design of this product, and it. It did receive, I believe it's on display in the Modern Museum of Art, mm. the Museum of Modern Art okay, in New yeah. York, uh -huh. um, and, and as a, uh, an example of industrial design right. excellence. So you're, you're looking to replicate a woodwind. A, a woodwind has various things, the, the reed pressure, the, the configuration. Right. That's the first generation. This was the second generation, a little, little different in its design. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, still similar controls. What were the, some of the considerations that the first generation lacked that you needed to come up with the second generation? Well, you know, it's just a, a matter of evolution when you when you design things like this. Like th this, the, the original one had a pitch wheel. Okay. And uh, the decision was made in the second generation to go without the pitch wheel. Okay. Uh, and just can use the uh, use the mouthpiece. These buttons which control the octave and the octave shifts mm -hmm. were in this particular configuration. And now we're into the third generation, which is the WX5. And it, as you can see, it, it kind of has a little bit more resemblance to its acoustic counterpart mm -hmm. in terms of its shape and size. And, um, and the, uh, the octave keys have been redesigned. The pitch wheel has been, uh, you know, uh, included in this particular model mm -hmm. and um, so people were liking the idea of having a pitch wheel well we, yeah. we missed it on the same oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so uh, you know it's there to be used and so now we, we're into the third generation the WX5 is and, and, and it, it's the first one with an actual physical MIDI controller 
Okay. And an input for a um, uh, power adapter. Now the power adapter, I assume you can have batteries on this or use the power adapter? It, it, it does. You can take the end off here and put six the AAA batteries in the, in okay. the, in the barrel. Okay. And, um, or you can use the power adapter or if you're using a dedicated tone generator that's designed for wind control, the power and the MIDI all travel on the same cable mm -hmm. like they did in the original one. Mm -hmm. And I take it, you know, we had the keyboards, what it was able to do, and now we're looking at the wind instrument version uh, of tone generation or tone generator, uh, MIDI controller, if you will. Um, this opened up, I take it, um, the ability for a woodwind player to be able to play synthesized sounds. Is right. that was the basic idea? Where the yeah, other that is, that's exactly the idea. Okay. That, that, um, Instead of using a keyboard, mm -hmm. which if you're not a keyboard player and you're a saxophone player or mm -hmm. a flute player mm -hmm. or a clarinet player, mm -hmm. then you, this gives you access to those same sounds mm -hmm. using an instrument that you're familiar with mm -hmm. and the technique that you've developed over the years. Mm -hmm. This has the ability to change its fingering from flute, uh, clarinet, and um, saxophone, mm -hmm. so it's familiar for all three of those instrumental types. And it also, because it's digital and it's MIDI, it can be transposed to any key. Okay. So you can you can play in any key uh, mm -hmm. with with just a flip right. of a switch. But you wouldn't recommend a student just learn one key because they could flip a switch, right? No, that's not, that's <laughs> not recommended at okay. all. <laughs> can you demonstrate a little bit about uh, what, what this is capable of sounding like? Sure. Sure. We, we have it connected up to our VL70, uh -huh. which is another um, uh, technology that was developed in relation to the Center for Computer Research in Music and Acoustics at Stanford University. It uses a physical modeling technology based mm -hmm. on a waveguide theory from Dr. Julius Smith at, mm -hmm. at Stanford, mm -hmm. at the Stanford Karma Center. And he was then, uh, he was there when at Stanford? Uh, um, this, he's still there, I okay. believe. Okay. Uh, but this, this, this was developed in the late 80s and early 90s. Okay. Um, I'm going to start off with this, um, this cornet sound. Okay. Which is a, a cornet, it's a trumpet like. Kind of trumpet, yeah. yeah. So you can see that I have a, a large amount of control over mm -hmm. the dynamics or the volume of the sound mm -hmm. by how much I breathe, mm -hmm. what the breath pressure is, and I also have control over the pitch mm -hmm. with this reed. So I can... And if you... The, one of the unique things about this technology is that until I blow enough air into the virtual mouthpiece mm -hmm. that is physically modeled in this, mm -hmm and create enough pressure and um, stimulation to mm -hmm. the driver, mm -hmm. it will not form a wave in its virtual pipe mm -hmm. or the, the body of the horn. Just like a real instrument. Just like a real instrument. Yeah, yeah I can hear the breath before the, yeah. And that gives me the ability to do things that aren't possible on a keyboard or another type of controller, mm -hmm. such as uh, triple, double, and triple tonguing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do things like sforzandos. Sure. And vibrato, naturally done from the, from the lip yep. or the diaphragm, either way. And articulation things like slurring and legato notes. Yeah, uh, that double tonguing, what are you physically having to do to create that effect? Well, I'm using the same technique I learned on the trombone. <laughs> okay. It's tucka 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 tucka. Okay, you're saying the syllable tucka tucka. Right. Okay. Or tucka uh -huh. if is the if if you were going to triple tongue. Very good. 
so a lot of that technique that I learned early in life is trans transferred over right. to uh, being able to effectively demonstrate how musical a, right. a controller the WX can and be. And who would have known you were preparing for this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And so what is the range uh, possibility of this uh, instrument? Well, it is, um, it's like 89 notes. It's one more note than on a regular um, uh, piano, piano, acoustic which has piano. Piano, right. Okay. So, um, I'm not sure this, this sound will actually go that far, but... Right. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, okay. So you have a tremendous range. Now, on the higher notes, is it requiring much more pressure on the... Okay. Not at all. Okay. And so you have these different... Uh, if, if three people or five people had these instruments, could they sound like a string quartet, essentially? Absolutely. Or, I've actually done that. Okay. Uh, I, have, I have a quartet that uh, plays um, using this technology. We play string quartet, brass quartet, woodwind quartet, uh -huh. and any combination of the others. Okay. Another thing that uh, we did um, a number of years ago when this first came out, I believe it was the, the WX-11 was current, VL-70 had just been introduced, mm -hmm. we did a big band. Mm -hmm. we, had, um, we had five saxes, mm -hmm. four trumpets, and four trombones mm -hmm. with a rhythm section, yeah. all playing these instruments. Fabulous. And uh, you can actually, if you Google it, you can probably hear recordings okay. of the concert that we did at the NAMM show, uh, 94, 95, something like that. Okay. I can't remember exactly the year, but it's, wow. it's still on the Internet. Yeah. And it's quite remarkable. I'll have to check that out. So this instrument can not really replace the other instruments, but it adds that dimension and has the depth that the other instruments have. Is that, would well, that be accurate? There has or? been an ongoing conversation since synthesizers became mainstream and have given musicians uh, the ability to mm -hmm. sound basically like anything or mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was an argument used when drum machines became popular. Well, you know, sure. uh, you know the, the joke about how many drummers does it take to change a light bulb? Well, none. They just get a drum machine. Right, right, right. But, um, but what we found is that that is not the primary purpose or the goal. To replace? To any replace anything okay. or anybody. Right. These are tools that musicians use. Right. So it's just another tool in your musical toolbox mm -hmm. to do things that otherwise you personally couldn't do mm -hmm. without the technology. So in other words, to expand your palette, so to speak. So yeah. in this case, uh, a saxophone player can now do a trumpet part. Right. Where b before, if he just had his saxophone, it, right. it was not possible. Right, right. right. And Or in this case, you know, I mean, uh, uh, let's just let's go get the... Um, or if he didn't have a flute in his, you know, yeah. with, he could just pull it out, the, the flute. Right. Or, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And the, you know, the French yeah. horn kind of, kind of sounds. Yeah. Or, you know, we've got a, a tuba. Fabulous. And you don't have that big case to carry around. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just another tool in the mm -hmm. toolbox that musicians, uh, you know, if, if used effectively, can can provide mm -hmm. opportunities and and, uh, and things that normally wouldn't be available. Now, as far as the skill and what it takes to play this instrument, I mean, how much skill does it take to actually get a sound, be able to play a scale, if you will? Uh, is this taking up a lot of time to learn, or what would you say? Well, uh, you know, if you... <laughs> try to draw a direct comparison between the acoustic counterpart, mm -hmm. in this case a clarinet or maybe a soprano sax or mm -hmm. even alto or tenor sax. Um, <clears throat> the technique of playing the keys and the notes mm -hmm. is the same. Mm -hmm. You would have to practice your scales and mm -hmm. your arpeggios in, in exactly the same way in mm -hmm. order to get the same facility mm -hmm. on this instrument that you would its acoustic counterpart. Mm -hmm. Where it is easier is in the embouchure and the tone production aspect of your mouthpiece mm -hmm. and your, you know, the physical embouchure that you need to develop in order to um, 
effectively play an acoustic instrument is much more demanding mm -hmm. than on the WX type of instrument. So is it easier to keep in tune, essentially, or to play in tune? Well, you know, there it, you, it is possible to set up the WX so that it never plays out of tune. Okay. You know, so that you just take that is, pitch component completely out of the equation. Okay, because natural instruments, there are some notes are sharper, some are right. flatter. Yeah. Well, okay. you can you can completely move, remove that variable, but uh, I find that it, it kind of loses some of its musical uh, believability if you do that. Right. You know, it sounds too perfect, too pure. Right. Okay, got it. And I, I think that the expression part of part of the articulation, expression, expressivity of the of mm -hmm. the instrument is mm -hmm. in the pitch at the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. With vibrato and, mm -hmm. and scoops and dips. Sure. And, uh, those kind of articulations. Now, that's mostly, mostly with the mouthpiece. Now, what about with the key mechanism? Anything uh, technically advantageous here that, say, the saxophone really couldn't do that would be advantageous in this particular area uh, that you can point out? Other than just the note range. Okay. You know, uh, I mean, there there are alternate fingering capabilities on acoustic instruments right. that you know really are some unique to each instrument. Right. And we have some alternate fingering capabilities here as well to mm -hmm. make some of the transitions between the octaves easier in certain mm -hmm. passages and those kinds of things. But other than just the the physical range mm -hmm. of the notes available, uh, mm -hmm. the technique is pretty much the same. Are you finding more people understanding this instrument, gravitating towards it, using it, or is it just sort of a supplement? Is it becoming more of a predominant thing? And what, what, what's the evolution? Where are we headed with this? I think it. You know, it, it's very similar to its uh, in its as a subgroup of of uh, musicians and, and electronic musicians. Mm -hmm. It's the same. You know, there's just there's X number of saxophone players, there's X number of trumpet players, mm -hmm. there's X number of trump, uh, flute players, there's mm -hmm. X number of people that are drawn to control the sounds using this instrument that way. Sure, sure. So sure. It's very similar, I think. Fascinating. So, any closing comments that you would like to mention about this instrument and uh, what you think uh, should be expressed? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, you know, we, we've just barely scratched the surface on uh, some of its capabilities, and mm -hmm. I think maybe we will have a chance to go into that at, at, at a later date. But mm -hmm. um, I think hopefully you've gotten an idea of the, the, I, the idea being giving uh, expressive musical control over synthesized sounds mm -hmm. using the technique mm -hmm. that a woodwind player has already developed. And that's the whole concept here. Now, now, Avery, before everyone goes off the year, I've got a huge crowd behind me that is, that is saying, we'd love to hear the flute. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> talks about that flute, but nobody believes we can produce it. You know, there's another interesting sound that we can do here that you probably don't expect. And in the physical modeling, in the world of physical modeling synthesis, we found that the the mathematical description of the reed driver mm -hmm. does not differ that much from the mathematical description of a bow mm -hmm. drawn across a string. Sure. <laughs> That bowed effect of uh, this is a cello. So you know we we have 
hundreds of more sounds Almost to unlimited, explore. to from yes. the orchestral side to the band side to the synthesized side. You have all these colors that you can bring into play. Uh, just one last question, though. What about um, harmonics? Uh, more than one instrument at a time. One, uh, you know, uh, more more than one note at a time, or is it single line? Primarily? Well, that's a, that's a question that we get a lot. Of, you know, a lot. And when we're talking about the physical modeling synthesis, mm -hmm. an accurate physical model mm -hmm. of a blown pipe mm -hmm. will only produce one note at a time. Excellent. So. Um, the only way to get uh, multiple notes right. is to combine multiple instruments okay. and multiple tone generators. But when we get into the world of sample sounds and right. those kinds of things, right. all of those limitations go out the window. Wonderful.